This is KGW News at 11. We start off tonight with breaking news. A search and rescue operation is currently ongoing near Multnomah Falls as crews attempt to locate a missing hiker. The Multnomah County Sheriff's Office tells us the hiker is a 48 year old man for the Portland area that got separated from his group early this afternoon. He never returned to the Oneonta trailhead. Attempts to ping the hiker's phone have failed. Right now we're assuming that this individual is lost. And so we'll, we will have uh, about 20 searchers out in the out on the trail system trying to locate him tonight. The Multnomah County Sheriff's Office says they will be searching throughout the night to try and locate the missing man. We have a crew on scene and we'll bring you updates on air and online when we learn more. I like the creativity, all the lights. It's pretty, pretty amazing what they can do. The annual Starlight Parade took over the streets of Portland this evening. Thousands of people lining the parade route. It's an event people look forward to all year long. Art Edwards gives us a closer look at the display. A near perfect night for a parade in Portland. The Starlight Parade is the first parade of the Portland Rose Festival. It's something people look forward to. Oh, it's it's fun. It's kind of the start of the Rose Festival and you're coming here for years. Not every year, but uh, as much, often as I can. They even remember some of the things they saw years ago. Oh gosh, as a kid watching, there used to be a, a all used car group called the Portland Beaters and they would parade their old beater cars. I remember that. This parade is filled with colorful floats and lots of lights. That's kind of what the Starlight Parade is all about. The Royal Rosarians always walk the parade route. And then there's the Rose Festival Queen. For a lot of people, the bands are the big attraction, and it can bring back some fond memories. This is the first time I've seen it as an adult. I used to be in a band and marched it, and now my daughter's here marching in it, so I'm, I'm going to watch her go by. For others, it's a family affair. This father and son have watched together for a few years, and it's always a good time. It's pretty special. Um, I'm home from uh, college, and so it's one of the things that like we get to just do together and uh, hang out. Watching the Starlight Parade is something a lot of families do together, and it's something they don't want to miss. Art Edwards, KGW News. It seems like everyone's having a good time. I like that. It's really nice. Now, tomorrow will be a little bit different. It'll be rainy tomorrow, but yeah, that's the way it is in Oregon, so got to go with the flow. And that's the way it is in Oregon. That's true. Even before the parade kicked off today, the weather made it an ideal day earlier to visit the Rose Festival at the waterfront. But we'll start seeing changes as we head into Sunday. Let's bring in meteorologist Joe Ranieri. Joe, what are we looking at here? Uh, an atmospheric river, a rare one, is going to be aiming for us here late tonight. Really, I should say throughout the uh, tomorrow morning, right around 9, 10 o'clock uh, here in the metro area. Along the Oregon coast, you'll see it right around 6 a.m. So, yeah, it, it's pretty rare to see a late spring atmospheric river pointed uh, right at the Pacific Northwest. Heavy rain at times, not just tomorrow, but into Monday as well. The heaviest amount of rain will fall in the afternoon. Another heavy round will be arriving late tomorrow night and into Monday. Monday morning. We could be seeing a rise in area streams and rivers. Along with that, there could be a, a jump in um, rise in, in the uh, you know, urban street flooding as well with these heavy downpours. There's not going to be a, much of a window uh, of a break from the rain. So as we look at the future cast, here we are. We're dry right around six o'clock tomorrow morning, picking up some light showers near Corvallis. But as we put this into motion by 930, we're already seeing that rain move in and it is going to be a steady mess heading into the afternoon hour, especially along the Oregon coast. We have some yellows and some oranges. A little bit of a break late tomorrow night and then like I said another round John moves in after midnight tomorrow uh, Monday morning and will gradually transition more scattered showers. But again we're going to be looking at close to a, a half of an inch of rain potentially by the end of tomorrow. Some models are suggesting closer to an inch maybe more than that between the rainfall totals over the next two days. I'll talk more about that in just a few minutes. OK Joe sounds good. Well, new tonight, Portland police say a woman is recovering and a man arrested on felony charges after a kidnapping attempt early Friday morning. They say she jumped from a moving car to escape her alleged kidnapper, 25 year old Ra Fett. Around 1 30 Friday morning, the victim told police she accepted a ride from Fett 
when she tried to get out near Southeast 112th and Division. He accelerated the car, keeping her from leaving. After a fight in the car, the woman jumped out and was able to run away. Officers later spotted Fett's vehicle and arrested him. He's now booked on multiple charges, including first degree kidnapping. Police in Portland spent much of Friday evening investigating a shooting in the southeast part of town. It happened around 630 near southeast 154th and Division. Officers learned that uh, that dozens of shots were fired, hitting cars, homes, but fortunately no people. Nearly four hours later, officers arrested a suspect and recovered a gun, but it's unknown at this time if they're linked to the shooting. Law enforcement in Oregon City is investigating after a person was hit and killed by a train. It happened this morning at around 830 at the pedestrian crossing on 11th Street. The man was pronounced dead on scene by first responders. Oregon City police is withholding the man's identity until they notify his family. A man is dead after an Amtrak train hits a person in Canby. The police department say it happened on Thursday just after noon at the Pine Street intersection. The department believes Andres Alejandres didn't see the incoming train because another train stopped at the intersection might have blocked his view. Well, it's been nearly 14 years since Kyron Horman disappeared. He was seven at the time and authorities have yet to figure out exactly what happened. Today, our Sydney Dorner spoke with his mother, who is still fighting to bring her son home while also helping other parents with missing children. I can't even explain it. He's a part of me, and it's just something in there that just yearns to touch him and hold him. More than anything, Desiree Young just wants to see her son Kyron again. The last time she saw him was almost 14 years ago disappearing from Skyline Elementary School in Northwest Portland after presenting at a science fair. Kyron was dropped off by his stepmother at the time, Terry Horman, taking a picture of him within an hour of him vanishing. Last seen wearing a black CSI t-shirt. Young says Terry has told multiple versions of that morning, but has yet to be charged. The fact that we trusted this person to take care of Kyron and she not only betrayed that trust, but she also victimized all of us. Young admits being angry at Terry, but it hasn't distracted her from the bigger goal, putting as much effort as possible towards finding Kyron, organizing a car wash in Beaverton to raise funds for an even more aggressive search. With hopes of hiring a private investigator, law enforcement approved canine teams and a specialized task force. Doing flyers and bracelets and buttons and we're constantly spreading the word and our volunteers are awesome and you know raising money to provide some support in that arena is really important in a missing child case too. Young is using her pain and platform to educate other parents of missing children, hoping to inspire them to continue to fight no matter how much time has passed, emphasizing the importance of working with law enforcement. You need to bring your child home and so whatever you have to do to do that, do it. That was our Sydney Dorner reporting. A large building fire in Washington County required multiple crews to get under control. It happened sometime around 5 this evening. Crews responded to find a building on fire which had spread to nearby trees. Investigators believe embers from a legal burn pile spread to a nearby wood pile, then to the building. Crews kept the fire from spreading to a home on the property. We're also tracking a wildfire in western Lane County. Cameras from Alert Oregon caught the fire at Letsom Mountain, southwest of Eugene. The Oregon Department of Forestry said it was about 50 acres. No structures are threatened by the fire, and there is no word yet on what started it. In Washington, the latest effort to reduce waste went into effect today. There's now a statewide ban on styrofoam. That means single-use coolers, to-go containers, and dishware made of styrofoam will be illegal to sell or distribute. But it means local restaurants have to look for alternatives, and those can be expensive. We now have to spend four times as much in order to be able to supply this little bitty bowl. Being that this is a small restaurant, a small business, uh, the impact is very huge. The new rules also ban businesses from passing out their current styrofoam in inventory. Businesses that violate the ban will be fined $250 for the first offense and $1,000 after that.